In this video, I'm going to share with you how to use the Open Assistant, a conversational AI for everyone. This is proven to be an alternative for ChatGPT because it is open source and is free to use to share and reshare with your friends. Well, we believe we can create a revolution, okay? In the same way that stable diffusion has helped the world, we want to improve the world by providing amazing conversational AI. Now you can see this is an open source a platform available for anyone who is interested in interacting with AI or chatbots that can give you answers to your prompts. And it's very easy to use. All you need is just to open your browser and come to openassistant.io just like so, spelled just like so. You can just go ahead and say try our assistant and you will be prompted with different kind of steps to log in. For example, here you can write in your email address or you can continue with just an email and password or you can continue to, reg to register with your Discord account or if you have a Google account, you can just follow up and register directly. Now, once you register, you will be welcome to this very platform. Okay, so this is the dashboard. Welcome Epic Mentorship. Uh, open Assistant is an open source AI assistant that uses and trains advanced language models to understand and respond to humans. Okay, complete some tasks. So these are some tasks that they provide and you can complete them to gain some points. I'm not sure how you're going to use it, but I'm, I think we can use it if the impact is on this leaderboard. So people who have completed the, the largest amount of tasks can be ranked higher in the leaderboard. It's just a way of attracting people to kind of respond to some of the tasks to help them. Uh, like this now, I'm feeling lucky help improve open assistant by starting a random task. So you can start any random task and as people, as the assistant is responding, you are getting more points or classify assistant reply. If assistant give a reply, you can classify it and you gain points accordingly. So you can classify prompter reply. Also, if someone is prompting, you will be exposed to some other people's types of prompt and you can provide labels for the prompts maybe there are some classifications and with that you will also earn some points and then you can reply as assistant on your own if you know a particular topic or you're familiar with a particular prompt you can go ahead and reply in place of the assistant just for it to help so these are just ways to help train the assistant uh, very well and you will also equally earn points for that or you can reply as an as a user this one also you can gain points which is what we do okay we just prompt in sending our prompts and we get some responses so this is proven to be something similar or even better than chat gpt but then we would compare the two of them in some of our prompts and see which one is better than the other one okay so but for now let's just say we can see the leaderboard over here and this is something like uh, top five contributors today on what they have done and the points they have gotten. I think it just goes on to tell us that this is how much people are working on this platform and what, and what they are contributing towards it. And you can check the statistics also and then the guidelines uh, on how to use it, what to do, the do's and don'ts. You can find everything over here if you're interested in learning more. But for now, for this tutorial, we're just going to pay attention to the charts and some of the key platforms it collaborates with were during giving responses to some of our prompts. Okay, so it uses a pro other platforms like Hogging Fees, uh, Stability AI, Redmond AI, Weight and Biases. It uses some of these because mostly, most of these chatbots, before they respond to a particular prompt, they have to connect, interconnect with some other platform for them to get their answers directly. So for this tutorial, we're just going to try on the appreciation part to see how we can create a prompt and see how it's going to respond. So we can just go ahead and create a new chat from here. And you can see it's just brought in the new platform. You can see it's something similar to ChatGPT. But for this case, we may be prompting ChatGPT, but then using the Poi platform. If you have been following my tutorials lately, I've been using Poi to uh, use my chat GPT because it's much better. There is little, there is no any kind of lagging or delay or any kind of uh, error message while prompting the chatbot. So I'll ask some questions here and then I'll go back to the chat GPT using Poi and then ask similar questions and see how they respond in both ways. So let's say we ask a very simple question. For example, I prompted it with this simple question. Uh, tell me about yourself. And you say, I'm an open assistant, an AI language model trained to answer questions and provide information on a wide variety of topics. My goal is to be helpful and informative. 
while being concise and easy to understand it was created by lion ai with the intent of providing open source machine learning models that are powerful flexible and free for everyone to use or build upon okay as i continue to learn and grow through interactions with users like you my abilities will expand and improve over time so thank you for for the time to get to know me uh, is there anything i can respond so this is just a simple response from it and you can uh, thumbs it up or down if you want and you can regenerate this response in cases if you are interested in regenerating the response but then down here also you will be able to see the program it uses to generate this this very answer to under it has for, uh, for us and you can see the model it is using right now it is using this model and these are presets that it has it has a number of them so let's start by asking it some simple basic general questions and see if it can really give us an answer why why is the sky blue so this is just a generic question let's see the sky is blue because of this this is the railing uh, the Rayleigh scattering effects and you see it's explaining everything and I think this is perfect it has explained it very nicely and again if you want to see how it come about that you can see the program also that it just followed it's very easy to understand so you can see it is very fast and it gives us the answer directly that we need so let's try to see how is chat GPT going to answer this question for us as well so this is poi if you have not if you are not familiar with poi you just go to poi.com and you just create an account and you can see some of the chatbots that we're talking about here by the left side and this is chat gpt you can just click to uh, start chat gpt and we can come to the prompting area over here and just prompt you with the same question you can see no lagging nothing you just go ahead and give you the uh, answers that you are looking for and i think this is very very direct and gives you the answer as you move on directly so this is very correct and i think they are both uh, correct in the responses now let's see we can prompt in some something different let's try latest thing because I, as i know that chat gpt is limited to data up to 2021 september so let's see whether open assistant also is up to date so let's ask it simple questions like when did queen elizabeth pass away uh, when did queen elizabeth uh, passed away elizabeth passed away this is a question that if it is up to date then we will be able to know because queen elizabeth just passed away uh, just recently okay so you can see um when 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 that's my question when 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 uh, it's the debt i'm just interested in you can see the details it has given us quite a lot of information but then one when does queen elizabeth elizabeth died after um, Queen Elizabeth died after reigning as Queen of the United Kingdom since her coronation in June 20, 1953, making her one of the uh, longest reigns in history. She celebrated her Diamond Jubilee in 2012 and 60 years in this. Uh, while alive, she became this, 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 this. Um, I'm asking about the date. But the fact that it admits that Queen Elizabeth is dead is something very very good and it shows that it is up to date it is having some information that is up to date so let's say uh, which date did she passed away okay let's say specifically which day did she passed away sorry let me clarify i don't know if she has already passed away as she is still living according to my knowledge cut off of september 2021 so this is the fact that um if she passed away anytime between now and that date uh when i haven't been tra trained I'll be able to tell you about about it as I wouldn't remember what happened since then. So this one also is equally outdated because it is not trained up to out of September 2021. I think most of the AI's chatbots that we've interacted with lately have not been trained beyond September 2021. Yeah, so it cannot provide information that is after to September 2021. So it's apologizing. And the fact that maybe this is a, a shortcoming also because it's admitted that she has died okay she died a reign of this disease even though she doesn't know when exactly but the fact that it's admitted that queen elizabeth is dead is something that showcases that it has some degree of information as regards what's happening around around the world okay so this is the first one let's try to see how we can um, prompt it to write something so for example we can prompt it to write something like so let's say we prompt it with this can you give me an outline about an outline of business strategies using facebook marketing okay so let's see if you can give us an outline yeah certainly here is a several popular 
uh, Facebook marketing strategies for that businesses uh, can implement to achieve their goals. Okay, so you can see it is giving us the details of the strategies that you can adopt to get very good results in terms of your Facebook marketing. You can see it is very detailed and it's giving us point by point. It's very detailed. It listed up to six points. Define your target audience, set measurable objectives, create engaging content and utilize Facebook advertising tools, uh, test and iterate major results. Uh, these are very good points. And let's say we can try to prompt chat GPT with this similar prompt and let's see if it's if it's going to uh, give us the same answer. You can see chat GPT is also giving us the same. I can see they are kind of saying nearly similar things because this one also is saying define your target audience, uh, set clear goals, clear, uh, create engaging content, use Facebook ads, engage with your audience and track your results. And I think they are fetching this information from nearly similar sources because they are literally saying the same thing in other words. Okay. They are literally saying the same thing in other words. And you can see the list in the list at six points and they are similar points. Uh, judging by the the answers they gave you can see each one of them i can see the here now we can see 100 100 okay both of them are good and both of them are outdated because they don't give real-time information so at this point i cannot say that chat gpt is quite better than op open assistant maybe as we move on as we front it more we'll be able to know more so for example let's try some mathematical problems and see which one of them can get the answer correctly uh, let's try this very simple question that we've prompted earlier i choose a number and divide it by five then i subtracted 154 from the result and got six what was the number what was the number i choose so let's select this these are very simple mathematics i know chat gpt answered this very correctly but i just want to test open assistant and see so let's see what its response is going to be. What is this number? And you can see it has started the mathematics very, very fast. And let's see if it's going to get this answer uh, anywhere close. It is going to be, it is getting very much detailed about the response. You can see the answer very, very detailed. Now, what is the answer? <laughs> The, thus the original number remains indeterminate yo this is um very bad on its side because it said the number is indeterminate and this is very wrong let's try to prompt it to chat gpt and you'll see it's going to get the answer perfectly saying indeterminate i'm really disappointed because um this is wrong as you can see now chat gpt very fast it just simply runs it and the answer is 800 and that is very correct judging by the fact that when you come over here you can see the answer it, it is 800 and that's perfect so a plus to chat gpt and let's go back and see if we can ask it one more question that can define um, the last aptitude in mathematics for it so a student choose a number and multiply it by two then subtract 138 from the results and got 102 what was the number he chose and in this case you can see the result is 120 and i think chat gpt also can give us that 120 because it's very very good recently in mathematics you can see uh, it's going to give us that 120. perfect the answer is 120 but then let's try this open assistant and see if it's going to give us the similar answer over there about okay So you can see it is working and it got to 119. This is quite close, but this is not the answer, which is also a disappointment, which means to some degree, it's mathematical aptitude is not quite strong when compared to other chatbots like ChatGPT or the above. Now that's the mathematical concept. Let's try other generic concepts like writing computer codes to see the aptitude of this open, uh, open assistant, if it's really good at writing codes or not. So can we ask it, let's ask it this question, create a basic HTML code that builds a website um, for a website, create a HTML code that builds for a website that tells a joke about humans and animals. Okay, create a HTML code for a website that tells a joke about humans and animals. Okay. So let's say this is a prompt. Let's see if it's capable of writing a code. Sure, here's an example. And you can see it is giving us uh, that code. Okay, you can see it is giving us the code fantastically. And this is very generic. 
you see because he wanted to let's see this these are these will have a heading and we have a body and then we can see the, the closing and opening of you know, some of the syntax and you can see everything is intact but then let's see the joke that it has provided the human cross the road and then the answer is because he wanted to become a chicken uh, this is funny but it was too plain and too direct uh, maybe we can ask it to can you add some css to it all right so let's see the response can you add some css actually here is the updated version of the html code that includes some basic css styling okay you can see now it is giving us uh, some more details in terms of the styling and so on um, it's become, becoming more detailed in the code design or code development and i think this is fantastic but then let's see its counterpart how is it going to respond to this uh, very prompt maybe chat gpt let's take it to chat gpt because chat gpt is recently becoming super super fast and super accurate yes when it comes to code writing and so on so let's prompt it create a html code for a website that tells a joke about humans and animals so let's see what uh, whether chat gpt is going to give us that code so you can see here here is the humans and animals joke okay why did the humans cross the road that's why i said both of these things i think they are taking some of these answers from nearly same source because you can see now there are two different chatbots and they are kind of giving us a similar answer because look at why did the human cross the road and see the answer to get to the silly animal's house uh, knock knock who is there the silly animal this is a joke brought to you by humans and animals these uh, animals everywhere so i think this is this is quite detailed and it's very uh, very much understandable and it's a bit better than the one created by the open assistant okay so let's ask it to include some css okay can you rewrite it with the css yeah this is an updated version with the css and you can see it is in making it beautiful adding in some coloration and specifying the color codes and even the page margins and the font styles you can see everything is defined and is very very detailed you can see it is giving us much more detail and this is going to be a better website when compared to the other one that's generated by open assistant i think this is more detail uh, containing much more better features and data that can give us a better result so this is uh, basically its comparison with chat gpt we can go ahead to prompt more to ask more questions and see how these ai tools or chatbots can respond to some of our questions but so far so good i think chat gpt is ranking higher than this open assistant because it's newly introduced i don't know maybe with time as time goes on as it receives more training with humans as it, it, it interacted with humans the more it's going to um, get in get better and get more intelligent to answer better questions or questions in a better way so let's ask uh, maybe one more prompt um let's say can you translate this to to chinese or to hindi can you translate this text to hindi so let's paste the text over here and let's see if it's going to translate it to hindi for us absolutely absolutely so there it is here the translation to hindi i think this is pretty fast and pretty interesting those indians or hindi in the house you can tell us how good is this translation i think it's this fantastic and nice you can see it so that means that open assistant is a multilingual uh, chatbot i can uh, talk or can give responses across uh, languages for users to understand and use so i think this is next level and this is a plus on its side but then let's go on and and try the same thing with with chat gpt and see if it's going to give us the same response so let's copy the question and go back to chat gpt and let's prompt it with the same question which i'm sure is going to give us pretty faster than than the other one okay so here's the response and you can see it's even giving us response in in hindi accordingly you can see it's giving us responses correctly so i think both of them in this case are good with it and you can see this one is still giving us the response and you can see the concluding message okay so let's see from the chatbot the chat gpt honestly i think i prefer the arrangement with the chat gpt uh, results because of the way it is ar has arranged it and you can see the results pretty fine 
and even the arrangement the alignments the way it structured everything it's it has translated it paragraph by paragraph you can see even from the way it has arranged them okay so i think this is fantastic uh when compared to this so overall i think i prefer to because this one now it gives the translation everything in one place where i gave it two paragraphs and it gave one paragraph so this is uh, down points to it okay when compared to chat gpt i think chat gpt is more detailed and later on it included this sentence i'm not sure what it is um maybe it's uh, it's hindi or it's not i'm not sure but why does it include it i don't know so this is one of the points but overall i can say that um chat gpt is still better than this open assistant but in any case maybe as time goes on as we as it receives more training interact with more humans a lot a lot of improvements are going to be noticed over time so i think this is my experience with it i think it's a good thing it's a very good invention it's up to compete with chat gpt and even other ai tools because it's still undergoing some trainings but i think the revolution in the ai world is truly truly going to be uh, magnificent and it's going to be something to be uh, very very careful and we, we have to be aware of okay so i think this brings us to the end of my so that's that's it for my little interaction with the two chatbots i hope you enjoyed this video if you do kindly give me what remember to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to always hit the like and subscribe buttons to stay connected to this channel for more and more videos like this so i will see you in my next video bye